So I was debating which passage I should read out of this book, which is An Import of Intrigue. It is the second book in its series, which is the Meridian Constabulary series. I have two different series in the same setting going on at the same time, and the book that's coming up, The Whole Varelli Crew, is the first book in the third series. I'm going to need to start carrying around like a flowchart or something. Like this. <laughs> um, so this is the second book in the second series, which involves two inspectors who end up always having to solve the most bizarre and complicated murders. Um, so the passage I'm going to read, um, in this book, the murder that they're tasked with solving is set in the part of the fantasy city that my book is set in that is sort of the foreign quarters. So it's got a number of enclaves from a number of different cultures from around the world. And so, and the murder scene had elements from several different cultures. So it, it was, if the murderer explicitly set things up to force them to go around and ask questions in all sorts of different places. So in this section that I'm going to read, they are, they are questioning one of the people who they think is at least connected to the murderer from one of the other cultures. So, <clears throat> A quick coordination of whistle bursts between the pages led Minox and Rainey to Kelman's mural, who were waiting in the corner near the end of Maki. You had luck, Minox asked. It looks like Ajan is in a place called the Alas and Nada, Meryl said. At least he spends a lot of his time in there. It's a little restaurant down that way, Kelman said. There was a sign, there's a sign with a crane and a fish. What about Javi Adwal? Oh, Rainey asked. Nothing yet, Kelman said. He flexed his fingers a bit as he talked, and Minox noticed scrapes on his knuckles and a few spots of not quite dried blood on the cuff of his shirt. So that's how they went about finding Ajan. We can keep looking. Don't bother for now, Minox said. Beating a few Emox might have led to brief results, but in the long term it just hampered their ability to effectively enforce the law in this neighborhood. Get over to the Kierans. I want good eyes on Robbie Canarax and a man named Estiani Iliari. Where they go, who they talk to, what they do. Just eyes, Meryl asked. For now, Minox said. He made a point of saying good eyes for the sake of Meryl's ego. Not that he should have to give the man any butter to do his job, but these two were already troublesome enough. Keep a subtle distance. They're already a bit sensitive about the dock lockdown. They are, Meryl asked. Well, we wouldn't want them to upset them. His condescension could spread like jam. Eyes open, Kelman said. Then he pointed to Rainey. Watch your hair in these parts. They both hit it off. Your hair, Inox asked. It was an oddly specific warning. She thought about it for a moment and chuckled. It's not a real thing. Let's not. She sighed. Come on. They walked the streets, which got decidedly narrower as table stands and shop carts choked up every spot they could squeeze into. There was no way to get a wagon, a horse, or a pedal cart through here. Monox and Rainey couldn't even walk abreast as they worked their way through. He let her take the lead. Emox all have black hair, and their women traditionally wear theirs in very tight braids, so a woman with loose red hair would be shocking to them. It would be unusual, Rainey corrected. Minox noticed that several people, especially the Emog men, were staring at her as they made her, her way th their way through. But the presumption, and an accepted convention, is that Emog men are inflamed by fair-headed truth women, and even more so by my coloring. Surely they wouldn't attack you. Probably not. She held up her wrist, showing her marriage bracelet. Most know what this means and tend to accept the idea that I'm a goodly woman rather than a prostitute. Rainey's tone was hard to read, but it seemed equal parts bemused and enraged. So, Kelman's warning, the belief is Emok women would see me as a threat and they would attempt to chop my hair off. She turned back to him over her shoulder. I don't think that's based on anything real, though. The passage through the streets had forced them into a tight proximity with several of the locals, and Minox was on alert that none of them touched him or reached into his pockets, as did, or did the same to Rainey. Over there, she said, pointing to the crane for sign. It's a coffee house. Are you familiar with those? I've heard of it. Minox said. Coffee was an Emok drink, he knew, but that was all. I strongly recommend you do not have coffee if offered, she said. It doesn't sit well with people like you. Minox raised an eyebrow. Do you mean that I'm... She cut him off, putting her hand on... Almost putting her hand on his mouth. Don't even say the word. Not in this patch of streets. They really do not care for it. I'm used to it. Attitude towards mages, especially an uncircled one like him, was far from cordial. They will make... 
truths with downright indulgent. As you say, Inspector. They entered the Alasinadas, a dim establishment with almost no windows and few low burning oil lamps. There was a smell through the air, rich and earthy, almost intoxicating. Shirtless Emok men, rusted skinned with coarse, thick beards, were grouped at the tables, sipping from small porcelain cups and talking in low voices. Most of the talking ceased as Minox and Rainey stepped in. But all eyes on them, Minox decided to cut through all the pretexts. We're looking for a man named Nalasane Hajan. We're given to understand he's here. I am here, a melodious voice said from the far corner of the room. The men in that area shifted slightly to allow a clear view. Hajan was an elderly man, gray hair and beard. That didn't stop him from sitting there shirtless like the rest of the men there. Why are the constabulary seeking me? We have a few questions for you, sir, Rainey said, lowering her head as she said forward. About your business with Hiljam Abwethi Loris? Hajan let out a large laugh and sipped his coffee. Is he in some sort of trouble? He's been murdered, Mr. Hajan, Minak said. Murdered? Hajan put his cup down and put two fingers over his lips, murmuring something. Minak could only presume this was some form of prayer. Please forgive me. The table is yours. Rainy gave Minak a slight gesture that he should sit first. He took the seat, and then he maneuvered her chair so she would sit behind She maneuvered her chair so she would sit behind him. The various Emok men in the place, the ones near the table at least, eased back slightly, but still stood in tense proximity. You were not aware he'd been murdered, Monax asked. No, I. There were whispers amongst my friends here that the Fuergans in the neighborhood were making things difficult. He spoke in rapid Emok dialect to one of the men at the table, who responded in kind. Yes, two of his brothers were attacked. Most every man in here knows someone who was bothered or fought with last night, or arrested. If someone was, Minox started, ready to defend the actions of the Knight of Constabulary. Jean waved a stern finger at Minox. I am not angry about that. Order must be maintained. Our people, their people, your people, start fights, people end up themselves. I would like to help any of my friends, or friends of my friends, who find themselves currently in your custody, through proper channels, respecting your ways. I appreciate that, Minox said. I'm given to understand that most of the detained will be released today, though likely only with fines and reports. Most, Jean said. I imagine there are a few whose infractions were too damning, and true charges must be levied. This occurs. I cannot argue. Rainey cleared her throat. Your relationship with Hiljong? Yes, of course. He sighed and signaled to one of his men to bring more coffee. Do you wish to sit with me? Thank you, no, Rainey said, throwing a warning look at Minox. We've found it doesn't agree with our systems. He nodded sagely. Many Druids have this problem, I understand. If there's nothing we can offer you, we are well, we are well, we are well. Rainey said, as if this was a bit of ritual. Hajan seemed to recognize this and grinned. Of course. He folded his hands together. Wefi Lurie was a good associate. I would even call him dear to me. You were friends, Monix asked? That word is not lightly used. I cannot imagine a foreigner I would use that word for, but perhaps Wefi Lurie would come close. We did business together. We've gathered that, Mr. Hajan, Rainey said. Could you be more specific? Of course. I represent a trust in Kalad that imports products from there to Western markets. The Hiljam have several ships that run goods from Fuerga to Druthal, and to accomplish that, they require friendly ports to resupply. Ports in Galad, Rainey said. Minox asked a question that was probably foolish. And Galad is Southern Imakan, Rainey answered. Jean scoffed at this, but gave no further rebuke. My people in Jalad give the Hiljam uh, friendly ports, and the Hiljam transport our goods for minimal cost. It has been most equitable for both of us. So you've had no complaints, Minox asked. None. And to my knowledge, neither did the Hiljam. Hmm, Minox said. That didn't square with what Hiljam about Tashai's claim of difficulty squaring accounts. Would any other associates of yours, or rivals? Jean peered at Minox with dark, piercing eyes. You are a very thin man, Inspector. Why have you come to talk to me? The murder weapon, Minox said. Perhaps you are familiar with it. It's an Emok knife called a Talveka. A Talveka? He laughed, and then said something to the rest of the crowd. They all laughed as well, and then the laughter stopped cold. A Talveka is not Kaladi. That is a Katabali whip. He spit to the ground when he said it, as did many others. Katabal is another province in Imakan, my next asked. Dejan turned to Rainy. You seem to be the smarter one here, dear lady. Your associate keeps referring to Imakan like it's a place that means something to me and my friends. Kaladidana, yat! The men around him repeated what he said. We are all Kaladi here. My apologies, Minox said. I didn't understand. Most truth do not. 
Monarchs hit upon an ideal. Is the name Jabiul Dal a Kadabi one? Hassan Jabaduali? Hassan said, rising from his chair, that! Whatever his next thoughts were, they couldn't be expressed in trade, and he went into a tirade in his native tongue. What about Hassan Jabiul Dal? Monarchs asked. He is piss, Hassan sneered. He is a stain that deserves to be wiped off my shoe, is what he is. So, a business rival, right? Rain said dryly. A rival? Hardly. Ideal in coffee, sandalwood, spices, legitimate trade. Jabi Odal only uses it as a front for his filth. This triggered Monax's interest. What sort of filth? Smuggling? Drugs? Slaves? I will not sully myself with further talk of these things, Inspector. And I do not believe we have any more to say. No one in my employ would use a Televega, and the death of Weapon Larise brings me nothing but hardship. So I would hope I am not a suspect. We're just gathering information at this juncture, Mr. Hajan. Then do it elsewhere. I am done. He waved them off, and the other man rose up as if they were willing to make the matter more confrontational. We'll be in touch, Rainey said, stepping away from the table. Thank you much. Thank you for your time. At Chahala. At Chahala, he replied with a respectful nod of his head. Rainey was not the least bit subtle as she pulled Minox back out to the more late morning sun. That was a waste of time, Minox said. We may have to get a writ to further interview him. Hopefully that won't be necessary, he said. I think he was telling the truth. As do I, Malik said. And if his opinion of Javi Nadal is correct, then that's the man we should seek out. Not right now, Rainey said with apprehensive sigh. We have an appointment with the Loranids. <laughs> I don't know if there's any questions.